Okay, so they said that this dude here, um, John Sith uh, Pemberton, that he was born July 8th, 1831, which would have made him a cancer, in Knoxville, Georgia, and he died in Atlanta, Georgia, August 16th. He went to the school of the University of Georgia, and they say he was a Confederate. And also they said that here that he was a biochemist, and he's uh, known as the inventor of Coca-Cola. Okay, that's what they say about him. And here's an image of the dude right here. But you already know, you know. They And also, bam, here they go. Here it is. Boom. Mason, right? So, for him being a Mason, or he, you know, for, he was a Mason, I should say, that he was obviously into the occult sciences. So, he knew, you know, certain things about certain, you know, indigenous cultures, obviously, right? So, because that's what they study. They study ancient um, Egyptian cultures, you know, Babylonian cultures, Sumerians, so on and so forth. So, with that being said, you can't tell me that this dude didn't know anything about the indigenous inventions. And, in my opinion, homeboy, he copied from the uh, ancient Indians, from the ancient American Indians, what they, the drink that they had using the cola nut. Okay? And I'm about to get into it. Alright? Okay, they say here, cola nut. Okay, which is spelled with a K. It says, caffeine containing nut of cola. Acu nata cola natita. Trees of the cocoa family, native to tropical Africa and cultivated extensively in the American tropics. So basically, they try to give it, you know, try to say that Africa is responsible for having this. But it's also found in the Americas. But okay. It says the evergreen tree grows 18.3 meters, 60 feet, and resembles a chestnut. It is 5 centimeter long. Brown nut is uh, hand collected and dried in the sun for commercial use, mainly as an ingredient of soft drinks and medicine. It says American and European soft drink manufacturers, however, do not use the cola nut. Instead, they manufacture synthetic chemicals that resemble the flavor of the cola nut. And see, the reason why they did that is because for whatever reason, they end up banning this nut for some reason. I don't know why. But anyways, it says cola nuts are used locally as a median, medium of exchange. They are also commonly chewed by local laborers as a stimulant to, the, to diminish sensations of hunger and fatigue. So I guess that's what they, how they use it over there in Africa. And it says small pieces of cola nut chewed before meals act as an aid to digestion. But it says in Brazil, which we know is in South America and in the West Indies, it says the astringent tasting nuts are used as a botanical drug to combat intoxication, hangover, and diarrhea. It says the Igbo of southeastern Nigeria employed the nut in various social rituals. The presentation of the plate of cola nuts is in the central aspect of visitation rituals practiced by the tribes. Okay, so that's what they have to say about the cola nut. And this this is an ingredient that Coca-Cola used to use um, in the soft drink. You may have heard that Coca-Cola once contained an ingredient capable of sparking particular devotion in customers, cocaine. The coca in the name referred to the extracts of coca leaf that the drink's originator, Alana chemist John Pemper Pemperman, mixed with his sugary syrup. At the time, in the late 19th century, the cocoa leaf extract mixed with wine was a common tonic and Pemberton's sweet brew was a way to get around local laws permitting the sale of alcohol. But the other half of the name represents another ingredient less infamous, perhaps, but also strangely potent, the cola nut. The pod of the cola nut, if you never had the sensation of seeing one yourself, is about two inches long and green. Inside the shell are knobs of fleshy meat 
like you might find inside of a chestnut, but reddish or white in color. In West Africa, the kola nut's native habitat, people have long chewed them as stimulants. That's because the nuts contain caffeine and theobromine, substance, substances that also occur naturally in tea, coffee, and, and chocolate. They also have sugar and cholinin said to be a heart stimulant. Says there's plenty of pick me up in them, and their cultivation in West Africa is hundreds and hundreds of years old. Historian Paul Lovejoy relates that for many years the leafy spreading trees were planted on graves and as part of puberty uh, rituals. Even though the nuts, which need to be moist, can be somewhat delicate to transport, traders uh, carried them hundreds of miles throughout the forest and the savanna. Their value can be understood by the company they kept. In 1581, the ruler of the Songhai Empire in Western Sahel said to Timbuktu on the occasion of the mosque construction of a sumptuous gift of gold, cowrie shells, and cola nuts. Okay, so that's what they say about it. About the this particular, you know, ingredient. Okay, that's what they say about it. So now we're going to get into, you know, the origin of cocaine. And okay, so Oxford, they're saying the cocoa leaf is true by indigenous Andean peoples. And skipping down, it says, it says it's a part of the Andean indigenous life ways for thousands of years. So the, the plant that is known for, you know, drug cartels, use it in order to to use uh to make cocaine out of right so that plant was used to make cocaine and this pharmacist this mason pemberton he had used cocaine and he had used the cola the cola nut in order to create coca-cola and it just so happens that both of these plants grow in the americas that they were saying that the cola nut is grown and used in the West Indies. And they saying that this plant right here, the cocoa leaf, is indigenous to South America, in particular to Bolivia and Colombia and Peru. So with that being said, I think that's enough, you know, like evidence to show that I believe that he pretty much he took from the indigenous people. And he saw, you know, or he knew about, you know, what the indigenous people were doing and how they was using it as a medicine. And then he took that information and made his own version of it. But instead of using it as a medicine, he decided to use it for commercial use. Okay, guys. Now, on this video, this is going to show you how you can make your own, you know, cola syrup, natural cola syrup, if you don't want you know, to get Coca-Cola or Pepsi and be bothered with all those chemicals that's in those things, but yet you still want that cola taste. You can make it at home. Watch this.
And in this video, he's going to show you the 1866 version of the Coca-Cola formula. Welcome friends. Today in the kitchen, we're going to do something a little bit special. We're going to do the 1880s Pemberton Coca-Cola formula. Um, and so Pemberton is the guy who invented Coca-Cola. Uh, he invented Coca-Cola in the hopes that he could wean himself off of morphine with cocaine. Um, in the end, it didn't work for him. So, um, so he came up with this formula, and this is out of one of his notebooks. And it is by no means the recipe or formula that Coca-Cola uses today, and they're very adamant about that. But by making this, it should give us a little bit of insight into... Uh, where this product started and what it tasted like at the beginning and often what things taste like way back then is nothing like they do today so I started out with some high proof alcohol you want to get the highest proof that you possibly can um, and so what I've got is a uh, 76% or 152 proof grain alcohol um, that's the highest that I can get where I live you can get higher Make sure it's food grade, make sure that you can drink it because you can get yourself into very solid trouble if you don't make sure it's food grade. Um, which brings us to the next thing, which are these essential oils. Now, I first wanted to do this back in 2011, um, what, eight, nine years ago. I heard a, uh, a broadcast of This American Life on NPR and it was all about this formula and it really intrigued me and I wanted to do it. And at that time, everyone said to me, don't bother you can't get all the ingredients. And they were right, I couldn't get all the ingredients. And you know what, I still can't get all of the ingredients. Um, so these are food grade oils that you need to get. Um, they're in this form pretty toxic, you don't want to touch them, you don't want to get them on you. And there was one in particular that I couldn't get and that is neroli oil. And a tiny little bottle of neroli oil like this, this is five mils of neroli oil, was $480 US um, to get this little bottle. And the company said to me, oh, well, we can get it for you at a cheaper break. If you buy 400 pounds, it's 1.2 million. And I'm like, I don't think I need 400 pounds of neroli oil. So the first thing we need to do is measure out tiny little amounts of these essential oils and mix them into this alcohol. And so I've got these tiny little syringes, they're one milliliter each, and we'll measure these out, being very careful not to cross-taminate, not to get it on your hands, um, and to get the right amounts. So the oils we're working with are orange, lemon, nutmeg, coriander, neroli, and cinnamon oil. When allergies fill your nose with dread, try the pillowy softness of puffs instead. So the first substitution is uh, bitter orange oil instead of neroli or neroli. Um, everyone seems to say that's going to be fine. So this is our 7X formula. This is the 7X flavoring and we're only going to use a tiny little bit of this for a couple gallons of Coca-Cola. Um, very tiny little bit. The next substitution that you have to make is, um, is the coca part. Um, it is illegal to have coca leaves uh, in North America, and you need coca leaf extract. Um, there's no cocaine in Coca-Cola anymore. They, they pull that out in a factory, apparently in New Jersey, and then only put in the bittering compounds from the coca leaf. Um, but since we can't have coca leaves, um, I worked around a little bit, and I found another extract. Um, that has sort of the same flavonoid bittering compounds, and I'm gonna give that a try. I think you should probably just leave it out though. Um, I'm a little worried, obviously that wasn't a real coca leaf. Um, I'm a little worried that I'm not gonna get it quite right. So now we move on to the sugar syrup component. Um, so we're gonna start it with some water in a big pot. And the next thing is to weigh out the sugar. So I know that everyone has been freaked out for years that, you know, perhaps way back there was cocaine in Coca-Cola. Um, 
I would posit that the real killer in this soft drink is the sugar. Like that's a lot of sugar. Um, so in it goes into the water, and we want to just we just want to dissolve that. We're making a simple syrup. So we'll just gently heat this and stir it until the sugar has dissolved. While the sugar is dissolving, I am going to juice some limes. So the sugar is pretty much dissolved, and now we just add in caramel. Okay, the sugar syrup is dissolved. We didn't bring it up to a boil, we didn't really get it hot, just warm enough that the sugar crystals disappear into the water. Next in is vanilla. Um, I've got my notes open because I just want to make sure I get this right. So in goes the vanilla, and I normally don't measure vanilla, I free pour, um, but somehow this time I think it's important to, <laughs> to measure. Um, this is all to the point where if you were using extract of coca, you would put it in. Um, we're not putting anything in, um, and I decided not to put anything in in its place. So, next in is uh, the caffeine extract. Now, I know it's called coca after the coca leaf and cola after the cola nut, but by 1880, 1885, Pemberton already wasn't using cola nut. Um, he was only using uh, citrate of caffeine. So directly, he decided that it wasn't the flavor that he was after, it was the caffeine that he was after. So um, he stopped using cola nut at that point. And there's no reason to believe that um, Coca-Cola is using cola nut anymore. Um, so it's just straight caffeine mixture, uh, 3.75 mils. And um, apparently this is about five times the amount of caffeine that is in cola beverages today at the store, or any beverage today at the store, uh, really high caffeine. Once that goes in, um, the lime juice, so freshly squozen lime juice, and citric acid. Um, citric acid is something that is not used in today's Coke. Uh, you can tell that because they use phosphoric acid, I think it is on the label. Um, they do list the acid that they use. And that's it for the sugar syrup. Okay, so we've got our 7X flavor mixture and our sugar water caramel mixture. And there's a bit of math involved because you only use a very little bit, like 1.5 milliliters per liter of sugar syrup. So I need to measure how much sugar syrup we have and then determine how much 7X to mix into it. So it looks like 2.25 liters. So we need 3 milliliters of 7X. Uh, let's see. Living dangerously. There we go. Mix that in. Let's just give that a straight up taste. So this is this is really concentrated. Um, let's just see if it's even edible. Huh. I can see where that's going. Let's see what Julie thinks. Okay, so here's a recipe for some natural cola syrup. It says one quart of water, finely grated zest, and juice of one lemon, finely grated zest, and juice of one lime, finely grated zest, and juice of two oranges, three large five-inch cinnamon sticks broken into small pieces, two tablespoons of dried bitter orange peel, two teaspoons of coriander seed, one-fourth teaspoon of finely grated nutmeg, one teaspoon of gun, gum arabic, optional, two pounds of sugar, one-fourth cup of browning sauce, such as a kitchen bouquet, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. It says combine the water, lemon zest, lime zest, orange zest, cinnamon, bitter orange peel, and coriander, nutmeg, and gum arabic into a large saucepan. Whisk together until the gum arabic dissolves. Stir in the sugar and bring to a boil. Stirring until the sugar it dissolves. Boil for a minute. And then it says remove from the heat and stir in the lemon, the lime, and the orange juices. 
along with the browning sauce and vanilla and let cool, then strain. This syrup will keep in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. So that's how you can make a cola syrup. So basically, in order to get that Coca-Cola taste, it's basically you combine in water, a lot of sugar with basically, you know, citrus fruits and also, you know, cinnamon and nutmeg and vanilla. And we know that a lot of these ingredients that we see here, you can basically find them in the Americas, you know, like citrus fruits are in Florida and citrus fruits grow pretty much, you know, in the hot tropical climates and, you know, like South America, probably Central America and probably Mexico as well. And we know, you know, vanilla is grown in the Americas. We know that the cola nut is also present in the West Indies. And we know cocaine is in South America. It says take the cola syrup as a scribe and carbonate. And it says here to mix with zester. It says take a half a cup of cola syrup and one and a half cup of zester. It says pour the syrup into a tall glass and add the zester and stir it just until combined. I mean until blended and add ice and serve. Okay, so that's what they're basically telling you. That's what you can do if you want to make your own cola, you know, naturally without all those different, you know, dangerous chemicals like benzoic and other type of, you know, other, you know, deadly chemicals in it, in your cola drink. So, yeah, it seemed like to me that he basically, he took, you know, ideas that, the American Indians were doing, you know, for thousands of years. And then he put those different plants together with probably, you know, spices and, cit and citrus fruits and created, you know, cola. That's what it sounds like to me. Or he just used like cocaine, the cola nut, a lot of sugar and water, and maybe some other things in order to create Coca-Cola, you know? So anyways, so I feel like, you know, this guy, just like the, all the rest of the people, all the rest of the foreigners, you know, he was an original, you know, he took it from the indigenous people from the Americas. That's all he did and he commercialized it. So tell me, what do you think about this? Please like, share, subscribe. I'm out.